I have the best junior team in the Winnipeg Ice, and I'm going to see if it's possible for them to beat the worst NHL team. Taking a look at this Winnipeg Ice team, they got some great forwards in Matthew Savoy, Connor Geeky, and Zach Benson, just to name a few. Taking a look at the defense, the team's looking solid with Carson Lambos leading the way, but let's be fair, this doesn't even compare to an NHL defensive core. And looking at the goaltender situation, of course, both of these guys are holding it down in real life, but in NHL 23, they can't even compete to an NHL roster. But there is one NHL team that this team can sort of compare to. That's the Chicago Blackhawks. The current date is March 11th, 2023. I don't expect this team to win more than three more games for the rest of the season. I'm just going to keep it 100. After all the moves they made at the trade deadline, your new number one center is Kurashev. No disrespect to Kurashev, but he's no number one center. Looking at the defense, we got no studs here. Yeah, we might have Seth Jones, but he's just not that guy, let's be fair. And then in between the pipes for Chicago, they got Peter Mrazek holding it down. And he's not holding anything down. And before we see if this Winnipeg Ice team can compete with the Chicago Blackhawks, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe. I'm trying to pass every single NHL team and YouTube subscribers, and up next is the New York Rangers. So if you haven't already, subscribe, turn notifications on, and help me pass the Rangers. Now the one thing I haven't mentioned, it's not just one game that Winnipeg has to win. No, they have to win a playoff series. So although Zach Benson's going to be scoring the OT winner in game one, and giving the Winnipeg Ice a 1-0 series lead in the very first simulation, we have to keep going until this team wins a playoff series. In Chicago, they're not going to be messing around because they're going to be evening the series in game two. Once again in game three, we're going to be heading to overtime and early in the extra frame. Kurashev, he's going to be finding Lucas Reichel cutting towards the front of the net. He's going to sauce that over to him and Reichel, that's going to be an easy tuck behind the goaltender for him and Chicago's taking game three. And Chicago's going to continue to roll heading into game four because this team's going to absolutely dominate potting seven. But the Winnipeg Ice, although they're not as talented as the Chicago Blackhawks team, they're not going to fold and Connor Geeky, he's scoring the OT winner and they're getting this series within one game. But at the end of the day, one thing we have to remember, this is an NHL team and the Winnipeg Ice, they're a junior hockey team. 11 times out of 10, a junior hockey team is not going to beat an NHL team, especially in a seven game series. So I think it's fairly safe to say that this current Winnipeg Ice team isn't going to be able to beat an NHL team but i think they will be if we add some of the best junior hockey players so connor bedard welcome to the winnipeg ice and after every single season i'm going to be adding one new junior player before we get into next season though a quick word from our sponsor i want to give a big shout out to seek geek for sponsoring today's video seek geek is a ticket app that takes all the confusion out of buying tickets for your favorite events on every single ticket there's a rating so you know if you're getting a good or a bad deal of course green's going to mean a good deal and red that's meaning bad the trade deadline is coming gone and now teams are finalized for the rest of the year and now's your best chance to catch an nhl game and guys i got a deal for you. If you use my code SOTI at checkout, you're going to get $20 off your first purchase. That's code SOTI for $20 off your first purchase. And once again, thank you to Seek Geek for sponsoring this video. In season number two, we're going to be starting in overtime once again. And Connor Geeky, he was inches away from having a breakaway, but somehow he's not going to control this puck. And Seth Jones, he's going to dish it to Kershev, who's going to bury this in the back of the net to give Chicago game one. In game two, we're heading back to overtime once again. Winnipeg is somehow able to compete with this team night in and night out. But this time around, we got a different OT hero. It's Connor Murphy. He's burying the winner. And in game three, with the help of two Athens CU goals, Chicago's going to be taking a commanding 3-0 series lead. But the Winnipeg Ice, they're not going to fold easily. They're going to be picking up a shout in game four. And in game five, what are they doing? Well, they're going to pick up another shutout and Connor Bedard's potting too. Although Winnipeg gained all that momentum and this team was looking fantastic, the Chicago Blackhawks, they're just going to be too much and they're going to be taking them down once again. So I said I was going to be adding one junior player after every single season. And Shane Wright, technically, he's currently a junior player. So welcome to the Winnipeg Ice. To start off season number three, we're going to be in another overtime time game and Tyler Johnson he's going to be beating the goaltender here and Chicago's taking a 1-0 series lead once again and they're going to continue to roll because in game two they're going to be scoring six and then in game three they're stealing another one and they've got themselves a 3-0 series lead but one thing we know about the Winnipeg Ice this team doesn't fold easily and with just seconds left in the game an unlikely hero in Armstrong he's going to get a break we he's going to score with 16 seconds left in the game and that's going to be the game winner and the dream of a Stanley Cup for Winnipeg is going to stay alive because they're going to be stealing game five with a score of four to two but sadly once again Chicago's just going to be too powerful and in a 5-1 win, they're hoisting another Stanley Cup. I think it's about time we help the Winnipeg Ice's defense a little bit. So Brant Clark, I need you to be our new number one defenseman. And it looks like the addition of Brant Clark is going to be the smartest decision I've ever made. Because in overtime, who's going to be scoring the game winner for us? That's going to be none other than the hero, Brant Clark. And Winnipeg, they're going to be doing something that I haven't done in the video yet. They're going to be stealing game two, and now they have a 2-0 series lead. Maybe this is going to be the year that they can finally hoist a Stanley Cup. Game three was a close one. It was going back and forth the entire time. And Tyler Johnson, he's going to be scoring the greasiest goal possible and he's going to keep Chicago in this series. And Chicago's building on that momentum. They're not slowing down. They're going to dominate game four. Not only is Mraz going to be picking up a shutout, but Chicago's potting five. And in game five, Chicago's coming out on top once again, and now they're one game away from hoisting a Stanley Cup. But this time around, things are different. 
this Winnipeg Ice team is different, and Peter Mrazek is different. Like, bro, where are you going? You weren't even close to staying in the net. You were a good six feet out. But I'm not going to complain, though, because Shane Wright's scoring an OT winner, and we're heading to Game 7. But it's a similar story in Game 7 as, once again, the Chicago Blackhawks, third NHL team. This is a junior hockey team. This should be the result 11 times out of 10. You heard that right. But that doesn't mean we can't bring some NHL talent onto the team, as Dylan Gunther, welcome to the team. Game 1 was a close one between the two teams, but a late goal from Reese Johnson's given Chicago game one and then in game two three unanswered in the third period including two goals from Athens CU in the game is giving Chicago a 2-0 series lead and for some reason Winnipeg was just getting outplayed in absolutely every single game and Gutman scoring the OT winner and that's putting Winnipeg on the brink of getting swept something that hasn't happened in this video in Chicago you guys messed up putting the Winnipeg ice on the brink of being swept did something to this team Winnipeg is going to refuse to get swept so they're going to take game four in a 3-1 win and then Zach Benson he's going to be the hero in game five he's scoring the OT winner in double overtime and he's keeping this team alive another day and then in game six the winnipeg ice are picking up a shutout this team was just down 3-0 in the series they fought their way all the way back and here we are heading to a game seven and a chance at history but sadly in the most heartbreaking fashion after fighting back from a 3-0 deficit in the series the winnipeg ice they just won't have enough star power and they're gonna be falling to the chicago blackhawks once again but the fact that this team did such a good job fighting back and made it all the way to game seven i'm confident we're only gonna need a few more players and the next player we're bringing in we're bringing in another forward from boston and lysel but sadly, Lysel is not helping us too much. We're going to get dominated in game one, six to two. And then in game two, we're losing a close one, two to one. But it's pretty clear this team has a ton of grit and they've shown that. So in game three, Winnipeg's dominating. And I think this might be one of the first time that the Winnipeg Ice have outshot the Chicago Blackhawks. Don't quote me on that. I actually haven't paid that much attention to shots, but very rarely does this team ever get close to 37 shots. All right, I'm incredibly stupid, and I'm going to keep what I just said in the video. This team literally outshot Chicago the game prior, and I didn't notice. That's an L moment for stick on the ice, but we're going to keep that in the video. And in the very next game, we get outshot 36 to 21 and lose 4 to 1. Seems about right. Okay, that statement I made a couple seconds ago is completely voided now. We've outshot Chicago on multiple occasions in just this season. Sorry, the brain departments and compartments aren't working right now. And in game six, we're in overtime once again, and Khrushchev, like usual, he's going to work, and somehow this is his first goal of the series. His first goal is going to be the OT winner. Nice. I feel like the forwards on our team are strong enough for us to beat the Chicago Blackhawks team, but what isn't strong enough? Our defense. So Minty Yukov, welcome to the team. I probably butchered that name, but it is what it is. To my surprise, the Winnipeg guys, they're going to come out flying in game one, and they're going to be stealing it away from Chicago 5-3. And in game two, we got us another overtime game in Shiloh. He's going to be potting the OT winner in double OT to give the Winnipeg Ice a 2-0 series lead. And we're not done here because in game three, the Winnipeg Ice are going to be coming out on top in a 3-2 victory. And this team now has a 3-0 series lead. We're not the Chicago Blackhawks. We're not going to blow this lead. We're going to win ourselves a Stanley Cup. All right, we got to chill a bit. Although we have a 3-0 series lead, we cannot be allowing seven goals in a game. That can't happen in the next few. And luckily it's not because 28 seconds into overtime, Lysel, he's going to be scoring the overtime winner. Not only is this an overtime winner, that's a Stanley Cup OT winner. And with that overtime winner, the Winnipeg Ice are going to be defeating the Chicago Blackhawks to win the Stanley Cup. How did they just beat an NHL team in five games? I don't care how bad the NHL team is. We just took them down in five games. We borderline swept this team. That's a tough look for them, not gonna lie.